Five years ago, one of the most anticipated video games for the Nintendo Switch was released, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Despite being the fifth installment in the now two decades old franchise, there was something unique about this one. Perhaps it was the amalgamation of all the trials and tribulations of the first four titles and the benefit of hindsight from them, but for one reason or another, Smash Ultimate was different. It felt more grand, more final, perhaps due to the name, Ultimate. Something about it was completely different than its predecessors, and the community received it as such. To date, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is bar none the most successful title of the five, acquiring more than double Smash 4's combined 3DS and Wii U sales and exceeding 64 Melee and Brawl's collective numbers. It also has been the most positively received title as well, feeling much cleaner from both a visual and mechanical standpoint. This was the pinnacle of Smash. Not long after its release, the competitive scene broke full swing into Ultimate, breaking all-time records for entrants, with views entering well into the millions per video from the game's top content creators. 2018 through 2020 was a golden age of Smash, with fans of the game casual and hardcore alike enjoying all the new characters returning veterans that have not been seen in a while and duking it out on stages with hundreds of thousands of spectators the world over. Stories were made, new champions were crowned, and the game felt like the best version of what Smash could be, finally appealing to both fans of Melee and Smash 4. Over five years later, and public opinion and interest toward the game have considerably declined, to the point where you have a pretty sizable chance of finding someone with a cynical or pessimistic outlook on the game than a positive one. You could attribute that to the game simply having been out for a long time, but I personally feel like there's more to it than that. So for this video, I want to talk about why Smash Ultimate is losing popularity. What really makes Ultimate stand out from previous installments is the sheer scale of the game. Smash 64 had only 12 fighters, Melee more than doubled that to 26, Brawl had 39, Smash 4 jumped to 58, but Smash Ultimate has a staggering 89 characters, more than triple the number of Melee. It was truly one of the most ambitious fighting game titles of all time. With that many characters, the likelihood of the game's meta ever reaching a point of conclusion is almost non-existent. We would need another 10 years at minimum to exhaustively explore the full nuances of every character and assess where they truly stand. And that's a low estimate too, I wouldn't be surprised if the game took 20 plus years. I mean hell, Melee's been around for that amount of time and there's still updates to the game's tier list. I think I speak for most of us when I say realistically we don't need a Smash 6, because how can you top Ultimate? Make a game with 120 plus characters? That amount would just be excessive, and potentially detrimental. There is such a thing as overscoping after all. If anything, should a new Smash title be released, they should cut the roster down to about the size of Smash 4, because there are just too many characters to think about. Though there's still a ton of vested interest in Ultimate's competitive scene, enough to where SmashCon 2023 this past summer was marked the fourth biggest Smash tournament in history. As mentioned before, common sentiment towards the game has declined significantly, with many losing hope for a long-standing future for the game the same way Melee has pulled through. There are many reasons to this, of which you've heard from discourse that discussion boards, but for this video, I want to list three major ones and give my opinions on them. The first and most popular theory for Smash Ultimate's decline is of course because the game is old. All titles, regardless of genre, size, or scale, are beholden all the same to the ravages of time. Even some of the most legendary franchises, if around for long enough, will experience a decline. Minecraft, Pokemon, League of Legends, they've seen better days. What enables a game to endure for long stretches of time though is of course, new content. Whether it may come in the form of patches, updates, or expansions to service-based games like Minecraft, or new games and spin-offs for fixed titles like Pokemon. Following Smash 4, Nintendo has done a bit of both, updating the game through patches and adding DLC, as well as porting a brand new game usually coinciding with the newest flagship console. In the case of Ultimate, while it's true that declining interest is inevitable, the ever-changing and adapting dynamic of its competitive roots allows it to continue being enjoyable to play and watch, as no two matches are ever the same. Be that as it may though, new and changing content is still of paramount importance in keeping players engaged, and with updates to the game having concluded towards the end of 2021, it's been over two years since the last patch. No new characters, no new balance changes, nothing. Honestly, the only thing maintaining the player base is that there's still so much to learn and understand about Ultimate, the same reason Melee's player base has held fast all these years. I wouldn't go so far as to say age had no bearing on Ultimate's gradual decline, but I also don't think it's the driving force behind it either. I know it feels that way, what with how everyone hopes for like a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe update or Smash 6, but on a macroscopic level, there's still so much to break down with this game that we can get to 2030 and the game could still have more to discover. That's just how massive in scope this game is. Besides, it's not how old the game is, but how developers maintain it as it ages. They can continue releasing updates and patches, but games can still die out. Vice versa, games can halt updates and become more popular as time goes on. I feel like with the foundation Smash has built for itself, there will always be a competitive scene, so that's probably not the culprit behind its decline in popularity. Now, would a new expansion or update help in reinstating interest back to the game? Certainly, the novelty of Smash Ultimate has long since expired, which is the point of updates and expansions, to preserve that sense of newness, but that's only one part of the problem. The second possible reason is the game's deteriorating meta. 
This is especially the dominant narrative circulating throughout the competitive scene. The meta. Ah, the meta. If there's one thing players are good at, it's complaining about the meta, no matter what form it takes. At a surface level, this may appear the most conducive towards the game's decline. With Ultimate advancing in optimization and efficiency, characters like Sonic, Game & Watch, and Steve have been targeted for being extremely boring and frustrating to watch and play against due to their one-sided gameplay. Other characters have also been regarded as boring to fight and watch due to their polarizing overtuned attributes, such as Kazuya, Aegis, Min Min, and so on, invalidating most of the roster from doing what they want to do. See, on one hand, I'm inclined to agree because it's true, Port Priority 8 was a total snooze fest to watch once we got to top 8. It was just not fun watching Sonic, Steve, and Game Watch do the same stuff they always do. Conversely, I have an awesome time watching mages that don't have any of those characters in top 8. This coincides with that overall pessimistic and cynical opinion people have towards the game. As Ultimate becomes more optimized, a number of players will start to look for the most effective tactic for the least amount of effort required. We hear it all the time, Sheik would be the best character in the game if you play perfectly, but why spend all of that effort when you can play Steve who is easier and honestly more rewarding? Characters like Fox and Joker are hyped to watch, but not many play them in top level because of how exhausting they are compared to Aegis and Kazuya who can flowchart through everything. Naturally, this leads to an incredibly negative outlook on the game's future, just like how everyone was whining about Bayonetta ruining Smash 4 by being so much better than everyone else. On the other hand, I'm hard-pressed to agree since even though it's true that tournaments would be a lot more enjoyable to watch as a spectator if we had a top 8 consisting of Roy, Fox, Sheik, Joker, Pokemon Trainer, ZSS, Cloud, and Wolf instead of Steve, Aegis, Sonic, Kasuya, Min Min, Game Watch, what have you, I think it's disingenuous to ignore how far the meta has improved. We're seeing a huge spike in mid-tier characters that had almost zero presence a few years back. Low tiers are reaching top 8 for the first time since the game came out. There's still that drive for innovation and exploration that was around at the beginning. Compounding that is a continuous clash between the game's best players. What I really enjoy about the meta right now is how volatile it is. Everyone has the potential to beat everyone. Gone are the days of there being a handful of top players dominating every tournament. These days, it feels like the top 50 seeds of a major can all realistically get top 8. Perhaps in the current moment, Akola, Mia, and Sonics are extremely consistent, but from 4th place all the way to like 30th, it's anyone's game if you think about it. So it's hard to really say that the meta is as bad as people think. However, it's still somewhat to blame for the lack of faith people have in the game's future. No matter what your stance is on the subject of Ban Steve or Ban Sonic or whoever, Steve and Sonic are without a doubt the two best characters in the game, with Game & Watch arguably being number 3 or the least in top 5. It's a far cry from the top 3 originally being like Pikachu, Palutena, Joker, you know, characters that are certainly more fun to watch in comparison. That may have been what drove players to stop caring about the game, the notion that it's only going to get more and more lame from here on out that even in spite of the rise of new players, knowing the best characters are quote-unquote boring or lame while being extremely overpowered paints a bleak picture for many people. I do concede that Nintendo chose a very inopportune time to cease balance on the game. If only the game ended at version 14 or 15 instead of 13, with one or two more rounds of balance changes to level out overpowered characters like Steve or Sonic, that may have helped more in stabilizing the game to still be more popular in the long term. I think it was premature of them to call quits on Ultimate only a few months after Fighters Pass 2 is completed, so it was a lack of prudence on the developers for sure. But once more, the meta is only one part of the whole picture. Another prevailing idea on why Smash feels like it's dying out is Nintendo's incessant interference on letting the community grow. This is nothing new. Nintendo has always gone out of their way to suppress the scene for no justifiable reason. They're not simply refusing to financially support the scene or organize a world circuit like how other companies do for games like Overwatch, League, Dota, etc. They're actively trying to stop the community from growing one themselves. As said earlier, 2018 through 2020 took advantage of the game's novelty for its appeal and viewership. In 2021, the game was still updating, but more importantly, Smash World Tour gave everyone something to look forward to throughout the year as a sort of cumulative endgame. The same was expected to happen in 2022 with Smash World Tour and Panda Cup, hosting two circuits for even more world coverage. 2022 was an awesome time for the game, and there was still a ton of hype surrounding it. I would know, I started this channel in May of last year and was pulling in hundreds of thousands of views per video with only like 25k subs. Then as we know, both circuits fell apart at the last minute, destroying everyone's excitement and expectations which were at a fever pitch at that time. I don't know if it's just anecdotal, but I feel like 2023 was the start of Smash Ultimate dying out. 2022 was great, there was still a lot of optimism and excitement for the game as we made it through the pandemic, and with the prospect of a world championship tournament circuit, it felt like the community was back and better than ever. Ample amounts of majors everywhere, with record high levels of attendance. It's as if we continued right where we left off at the beginning of 2020. But 2023 felt different. From locals, to regionals, to nationals, to even majors, there's this growing air of pessimism that I'm noticing, and I don't really blame them. Hard to imagine a bright future for the game whose own developer is actively trying to stand in the way of its growth. At the risk of sounding like a Doom poster, I feel like the big reason why Smash Ultimate is losing popularity is the common denominator of the past three reasons we talked about. 
hope. The Smash community, or the competitive scene anyway, always survived on hope. It survived on the hope that next year will be better than this year. This is the first time I'm seeing an absence of it. People are losing hope for a potential new world circuit out of fear that Nintendo will just get in the way of it again. People are losing hope for the meta evolving and continuing to be interesting because the top characters are all quote unquote lame and boring. People are losing hope for the game because it's no longer being updated and there's no telling signs of an expansion or the possibility of Smash 6. 2018 through 2022 was marked with fervent, unbending passion and hope for the game. Even through the coronavirus pandemic, even through all the controversy we went through with so many players getting cancelled, all of that. But I think the combination of the game no longer being updated, the meta progressing in a way not many people are happy about, as well as the downfall of Smash World Tour and the Panda Cup, has finally destroyed what semblance of optimism people had for the future of the game. Now, while I do like to compete myself, I'm first and foremost a content creator, so I see things a bit differently than the average player. My videos are geared towards competitive play, but all things considered, I can appeal to both competitive and casual players. From a casual standpoint, I can assume Ultimate is still doing quite well. It's still a really fun party game and still enjoyed by kids, teens, and drunk college students around the world. But even in the realm of content creation, Smash is on a downward spiral too. When you look at any Smash content creator who used to be around back in 2018 and see them now, Views are down significantly. Smash content had the potential to get half a million views per video. Nowadays, even channels with 100k plus subs are only getting at most 40 to 50,000. Many Smash creators have moved on to other games or began to diversify their content, likely as a result of our declining interest in Smash. So across the board, things aren't as good as they used to be. What can be done to address this? Probably to release a new Smash game. I said that we don't need a new Smash title, but that's from the perspective of meta development. I do think that with all that's happened, Ultimate has not withstood the test of time as long as it could have. It was just a really poor chain of events and circumstances accelerating the game's downfall that rather than try to fix up Ultimate, it might just be better to release a new Smash game and start over. For example, Bayonetta ruined Smash 4, but fortunately we didn't have to endure for very long since Ultimate was around the corner. I'm not one of those people who parrot that Steve had the same effect, rather it's a lot of factors both from within and without the game that contributed to this outcome. If making Smash 6 is out of the question, then yes, a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Pack DLC type thing would help. If they continue to bounce the game to keep the meta from stagnating, that can help out. But that seems even more unrealistic than Smash 6, frankly speaking. Nintendo isn't really known for backpedaling on decisions. They said they were done updating Ultimate, I think it's safe to assume they're being serious. In any case, sorry for making this video a depressing one. It was something I wanted to talk about for a while since throughout 2023, people have had a rather negative attitude towards the game's future. I hope Ultimate finds some kind of revival or resurgence. Whatever form that takes, I'm cool with. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on what you think is the reason Smash Ultimate is losing popularity, as well as your opinion on the reasons I listed in this video. For now, if you enjoyed, it would be awesome if you left a like on this video and subscribed. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Farsvam, join my Discord server, and check out my other discussion videos if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.